I got more to rant about because I went on for 20 minutes in my Linux only to listen to it, uh, to watch my video and watch my lips go out of sync with my mouth. I'm stupid enough to try again in software. Um, or it does that in Ubuntu, just all of them. I, I just don't. It's just sad. So I, on the one hand, where I'm very grateful to the people who've done what they've done, I'm very annoyed that a lot of these people's work isn't really having much impact because at the end of the day, when people go and they try something, you know, they they go to the <laughs> sorry, uh, they go to the used car salesman and he tells you what a great card is and you buy it and then you go drive away and it breaks down on you. You're never going back to that place again. Well, if people see people getting on YouTube and saying how great Linux is, and they're not honest as to what works and what doesn't. it takes a lot of work. It, eventually, it'll work and it'll work beautifully. But you really got to work. You got to earn it. You got to figure out how to configure a few things. In some cases, in some cases it'll just work for you. But over time, it won't just work for you. And over um, the range of distributions. If you take five or six distributions, stick it in your computer, it's not going to work for you on one of them. I'll guarantee it. And maybe something that worked before won't work next time when you upgrade. That's just the way it is. And so people need to know that. They need to know what to expect and need to be told that up front. And if they're told that, it's not always going to work, but if you if you want to help us, if you want to get somewhere, will help you by keeping things stable, give people reason to port their apps over to Linux and not have to worry about it not working anymore the next distribution comes out. Slow down your release schedule. Not every six months. No, no, no. Maybe at most every three years. Keep your packages up to date, but don't release the whole system that often. People don't buy computers every six months or every year. Encourage people to share their configuration files. Don't get all angry when someone posts an idea about sharing a config file. I think configuration uh, how to forge is a wonderful resource. You know, if they only just let you download a script at the end, that'd be beautiful. Don't try to get too fancy. Um, think about the way you make set things up. Like in SUSE, I've got. Um, Every time I try to go to install a package, it wants to download all the package lists, and it takes about three minutes for me to get in there just to pick a simple program. App used to work fine in SUSE, so why'd you get rid of it? <laughs> I sound accusatory, but you know what I'm saying is think about these things. Once app works and works beautiful on a system, don't don't mess with it. You don't need to invent yum. You already have apt. Um, if you if all that, if if the app was destroyed just so someone can click on the one-click install, I've got news for you because I tried the one-click install on web pages and it never worked for me, ever. Um, and when you release every often to six months, suddenly when the distribution is two years old, now the repositories start disappearing on people's server. Also, when you do a new release, every time you do a new release, everybody that's hosting these things out of the goodness of their heart have to do a whole set of compilations for all of these programs again. Um, I, I really doubt that the Linux environment, I know the Linux environment isn't, although I'm complaining about it, about its uh, vi not viability, um, Dy dynamic <laughs> nature over time is, is the root cause for the it's absolute failure on the desktop. Um, the only reason, because I right now the things I'm complaining about all worked at one time, but we, you know it also has to do with the burden of the work that people have to go through, and it, so if you you know every six months it's just gonna your, the, your own staff that makes your distribution every six months now. So you have to create the whole packages again. 
you can't use those people they're making the packages once again you can't use them to put the polish put some polish on that bootloader or make that configuration tool or do that one thing that would keep that some guy from making a blog somewhere about how Linux sucks and the reason why people are so angry because they they see all these people that look like they're confident that Linux is just great and then they know some secret that you don't and then when they put their CD in there they've gone to the used car salesman and something that doesn't work and even though everybody's out there is volunteering what can you do? If everybody's you know I think the onus is on the distribution to make sure everything works right <laughs> I, mean, I got so many things I can think I mean on this on this computer I've got four different Linux installations so what that means I can go and I can see what works and what doesn't work and just just a few things I mean I, I just, as they come in my mind I'm gonna mention them I might as well <sighs> like um, and I think the end result oh, I, I also should add the end result of this various chaos just because it's see Unix is so broken up into different parts and different players they all have to do a dance together and and even though everybody probably tries, they probably can't actually make the dance actually get it right. And the end, the end result is that there are enough failures. It has to almost be pro Microsoft has set a high bar. I'm sorry, so we got to get it so there there aren't those failures. We put the drivers in. We don't we don't you know come on Fedora <laughs> Red Hat. I mean. For years, they've been doing this thing where they, they they're just if the Free Software Foundation says it's this way, and that, that that's it. So we're not going to put proprietary driver. You know, again, I don't know if I've said this in this set of videos. I've done so many of these and looked at so many of them. In, I know it's going to work now. It's in Windows, but um, I, I don't. As, uh, desktop users don't care about the source code. They don't. They don't. It's it's nothing to them. So, so don't keep don't keep the drivers off their desktop. Most people don't, if it, unless you're a hobbyist, <laughs> or or you're just or able to live off of contributions given to your foundation, Mr. Stallman. Uh, I don't hate Mr. Stallman. I like Mr. Stallman very much. I like a lot of things that he stands for. I think he's very necessary. I'm nothing against him. I'd shake his hand if I saw him. I'm very appreciative for many things that he's done. So don't get me wrong. Um, but we can't all be Richard Stallman. We just can't. Um, we have to live in the lives that we live, work the jobs that we work at, be able to earn our keep, and use our computers to help us accomplish what we need to do, and then at the end of the day, maybe add something and contribute. And we all can contribute. Even the non-programmers can contribute, so long as we know that things are going to re remain stable in user land. We know that if we write it down, it's going to be worth something in two years or a year. And we write it down, once it's written down, it's done. Without this model of building, I saw some guy talking about economic, you know, the, the, how open source had a superior model to, to um, supposedly a, a superior model to um, Microsoft because we released early and released often, so we're following some kind of cash in or cab ban or you know, one of these newer models for manufacturing but the flaw the flaw I saw in, in what he said in that argument in his blog was that we're not building on our success we're abandoning successful things and we're we're doing new things so we're kind of you know building up and then we're going back down and we're building up and going and it's it's more than a single dimension you know there's one dimension would be grub one dimension would be x free one you know one dimension would be this distribution having having the drivers in and this one not you know, or this distribution decide not to put the drivers in those are all steps down <laughs> sorry you know if i actually did, i i feel helpless right now with linux with the source code. <laughs> Get it? <laughs> so, it's nothing to do with feeling helpless and divided. 
I feel helpless because even if I knew how to program, I probably wouldn't have enough time or energy to fix everything. I can give a little bit. Everybody that gives is worth something. Um, so if we do that, if we stabilize things and we don't break our libraries down to ridiculously small levels, if we don't build applications that require a ridiculous amount of libraries just to compile, or if we just pack the libraries with our own binaries, don't worry about it. Sure, you can share. Make it open source, but don't don't separate. Use your own libraries, or take those libraries, perfect them for your purposes, send your patches back if they're not accepted too bad. That's their problem. Move on, make sure your thing works right. When I made my network script, I worked on it, did a fresh install, I rebooted, did a fresh install, rebooted it until finally it worked in every situation, uploaded it, and then I had about 10,000 downloads, and I had, the only complaint I had is that I put a binary fire file probably in a directory that isn't normal for, for you, and it should have been, probably been in user bin, and at the time I put it maybe somewhere else. No, big whoopee do. But at the end of the day, people were satisfied. It wasn't the prettiest thing because I, I don't know how to program. I don't know how to make the, the graphical user face look good, but it worked. Testing works. So test, 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 test. Test early, test early, test early, test early, test early. Test again, test again. Make sure it works. Then release. Take your time releasing. Don't release early, release often. You're putting your um, people that host your software through hell. You're putting your users through hell. You're making Linux look bad, and um, all these problems I, that I mentioned probably could have been ironed out if they just would have waited, hell, a year per, for every release. Um, so that's my rant. I think I've probably, uh, probably stopped there. Uh, I'm trying to be a little more positive than it was before, but, you know, when I, uh, I had a few things. So when you get... But the, you're trying the package source. The problem is that package source is just trying to keep up, keep up with all this chaos. It can't keep up with it. So inevitably, now I'm I'm, I'm literally at a failure. It's, it's such a failure rate that I can't depend on any any X based program whatsoever to compile and work on Slackware on NetBSD. There will, there will be. I guarantee you, some stop. Does that mean I hate the package source people? No, I don't hate them. I love them. Does it mean that I think that what they've done is worthless? No, I don't. I think it's worth a lot. I think they're trying very hard, and I think I actually feel bad for them because of the way things arrive. So when you do whatever it is you do out there, um, try to take your part and make sure it doesn't rock the boat for other people. That's 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 the bottom line message I'm saying. Think about what you've done and how you change the experience for the end user. Make your config files consistent. If you change the way the program works, you got to make that config file work the same. Make them make sense. Put comments in your config files. Get to the point where the way your stuff works, Slackware is a good model. Uh, keep it simple, stupid. <laughs> And, and and we'll have success. If you can't do that, we're just going to keep going through the same rat mill. People are going to come and go frustrated. I've been doing this for 10, 10 years, and I'm not very happy. I, I'm, I'm happy about the things that I've learned, but I've only learned things because I've dealt with problems. And at the end of the day, people aren't going to use a system that is just, over time, is riddled with problems. And do you want that for Linux? I don't want that for Linux. I don't think anybody wants that for Linux. Except for maybe Microsoft. So if you want to keep them happy, keep going the way you're doing. Because <laughs> we we're not we're not going anywhere this way. We've got to go some other way. And I'll finish there.